Hey everyone, this is Adam Ellenboss from Nightlight Astrology, and today we are going to be talking about Saturn's entrance into the sign of Pisces, which is happening this week, March 7th. Uh, we'll take a look at it on the real-time clock, but we are going to be doing, we're going to be covering this transit from several different points of view this week. This is sort of the Saturn and Pisces week. Um, today we're going to look back at the last time that Saturn was in the sign of Pisces, which was 1994 and five, a little bit into 1996. We're going to take a look at, let's see, how many events do I have here that I, I, I went through and collected 25 different events from that time period that coincide with some of the major themes that you could expect from Saturn and Pisces. And I'm going to go over what those themes are. Uh, there are four themes that I uh, have categorized today that there, among, you know, potentially many others, but four themes that these 25 events embody that reflect the archetypal combination of Saturn in the sign of the fish, the domicile, feminine domicile of Jupiter and the exaltation of Venus. So um, we'll be taking a look at that uh, today and <clears throat> kind of a taking a trip down memory lane. Uh, for for those of you who grew up in the 19, I was born in 81, so the 90s was like you know, I was kind of a teenager during those years and um, junior high and high school and stuff like that. So uh, you know, for some people it'll be a walk down memory lane. Some of you maybe were born a little bit later. Uh, you were maybe really young for some of this, but hopefully you'll find it interesting. And I want to make it clear that I am not here to offer any kind of judgment or commentary on any of these events historically. I'm just here to tell you what they were and how they match the archetypal combination of Saturn and Pisces. Um, and I think, um, I hope you'll find it compelling. And what I would say in addition to looking back at the past is that the reason, the reason that we do this is so that we can understand what kinds of themes and topics are likely to come up over the next couple of years. So uh, that is our goal for today. Before we get into it, as always, like and subscribe if you haven't yet. Share your comments in the comments section. It really helps the channel to grow, and you guys know I appreciate that. You can find a transcript of any of my daily talks on the website, nightlightastrology.com. All right, well, let's take a look, first of all, at... Um, here we go. We're going to go to... We're just... I'm, I actually have it queued up to look back in time. So here is Saturn entering Pisces in January of 1994. And um, what you'll see is that if we go forward, uh, actually, let's, um, I'm going to eliminate everything from our perspective except for Saturn. So we can just keep it really simple here. So this is just advancing month, month by month through 1994. Saturn uh, is. <clears throat> Uh, Saturn is stationing and turning retrograde in June of 1994. So that's like the first kind of big portion. It retrogrades back and is going to turn direct uh, right around the early part of November of 94. And then it goes forward again, at which point into 1995, gets into the last decan of Pisces before turning retrograde again and station and turn into retrograde in July of 1995. It then retrogrades back into that middle decan, middle 10 degrees, and it turns direct again right around the mid to late part of November 1995. It then makes its way forward and doesn't fully leave Pisces uh, until April of 1996 when it goes into Aries. Um, so, you know, at which point then if you take it forward, you're going to see uh, that Saturn will station, turn retrograde, and it comes down into the early degrees, down to the zero degree marker of Aries by November of 1996. Um, but it doesn't go back into Pisces through that retrograde, just in case you were wondering. So it's really, you know, early 1994 through about April of 96. That's the time period. Now, if we go forward to the present moment and take it to March 7th, you'll see here is the ingress of Saturn into Pisces happening tomorrow. That's Tuesday. So uh, again, a week dedicated to Saturn's entrance into Pisces. Now let's take it forward and watch what it does. So its first big stretch takes it up to about uh, seven degrees of uh, Pisces. It then is going to station and turn retrograde by about the middle of June. 
and then it works its way backward all the way down to uh, about the zero degree marker, but does not enter Aquarius again. And that uh, station <clears throat> comes in uh, slowing down to station turn retrograde early November, or turn direct. Then it goes forward again, and we're going to see it all throughout 2024 working its way through Pisces. And then it turns retrograde once more here in uh, late June of 2024. It's then heading retrograde, comes down and gets to its station point here about the middle of November 2024. Uh, and then it turns direct. And then we're going to see it move all the way into the spring of 2025. Here it is. It dips into Aries by late May of 2025. It is then going to turn retrograde in, after entering Aries and come back into Pisces around September of 2025. And then from September of 2025 all the way until it enters Aries again in February of 2026, it's back in those late degrees of Pisces. So this is something that's starting here in 2023 and due to that little retrograde period, doesn't fully finish until a bit into 2026. So you always get, you know, that, that you know, kind of a right around two and a half years um, for Saturn uh, per sign. Now, um, <clears throat> uh, so that all of that being said, what we're going to do today is first I want to go over um, what I have as four themes to watch for in terms of the kind of events that you're likely to see in the collective, which can also be applied to our personal lives. So any of these themes could be something you personally experience or that you notice in the news. Um, the Saturn in Pisces does, does not mean that the kind of events we're going to look at only happen when Saturn is in Pisces. It means that there is more uh, attention brought to these things, that archetypally they stand out or there's a spotlight shown on them. Okay, so that's a good distinction to make because sometimes people will be like, well, these things happen all throughout history. Yes, a lot of the things we're going to mention are not like, oh, they only happen when Saturn is in the sign of Pisces, right? But they tend to be spotlighted when Saturn is in Pisces because whatever the archetype of archetypes of the moment are, uh, they, they, that those kinds of things tend to stand out and grab our attention. They, or they, they grab us, as we like to say. Uh, you guys know on this channel, I, I like talking about the planets as the Grahas. Okay, so four themes to watch for. When Saturn enters Pisces, one is the theme of outsiders and angst. Whether you're talking about the alternative uh, rock movement, or you are talking about the sense of someone not feeling in or fitting in or feeling alienated or rejected, this is a very angsty place for Saturn, who was naturally, by the way, associated with outsiders and outcasts, black sheep, heretics, rebels, those who are marginalized or oppressed. Um, and so um, when Saturn can, who can represent those things in any sign, but when you, when it enters the sign of Pisces, it's an interesting space because <clears throat> you're, you're in the last sign of the winter and you're on the in the last sign of the dark half of the year. It's a double bodied sign or a mutable sign, which often indicates that there will be major transitions. So I like to say that these are, are um, make or break moments, both for individuals who feel like outsiders uh, or for groups of people uh, who are marginalized or oppressed. And it is also not only um, these are make or break moments, but they are often breakthrough moments or moments of transition for people who experience themselves as um, any kind of any kind of marginalization. Like even, you know, I'm an astrologer. So there's a lot of people who don't like astrologers uh, who, who think it's all fake or, or whatever. You can often see that there will be really important make or break moments and moments of transition and change for people who are outsiders and in, in the broadest sense. Um, and, and I'll give you many examples today of this. Um, also the angst that goes along with this, this is an angsty transit. You've got Saturn who is associated with melancholy and a double bodied feminine water sign that exalts Venus. So you get this kind of romantic angsty quality. Um, and then you have associated, but sort of 
taking everything, the intensity of some of these themes up a notch, you have uh, themes like genocide or civil war uh, to eliminate those who are, are different. Um, often the same, uh, the, and you might wonder like, well, what does this have to do with Pisces? Remember that this is a Jupiter ruled sign. And so anytime that Saturn is in a Jupiter ruled sign, like Sag or Pisces, the tendency for, um, dogmatic extremes and polarization along ideological lines can be stepped up quite a bit. But now you have things that can be very um, emotionally charged, um, you know, real intense emotional. Um, and the other thing to remember is that water uh, in ancient astrology, water, among many other things, is associated with uh, like, like tribes or groups, groups of people. Um, tribe might not be the best word, uh, but a, a group, a, a, a collective, a community could be ethnic or religious or, uh, you know, um, uh, political, but there are, um, one of the things that, uh, water has in common is kind of like, um, what's the, uh, blood, blood is thicker than water, you know, but in astrology, water's close, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like the, the things that we are bonded to or joined to. I mean, what do if you think about what do individual droplets of water do? You know, if you kind of point them all toward going down a slope, they they go down and they go to the lowest point and they gather together, and the the little droplets make up like a puddle. Uh, and um, you know, I can tell you with kids in the house and dogs, <laughs> there's lots of <laughs> there's lots of congregations of liquid. <laughs> so, um, but you get you guys get the idea something about Jupiter in a water sign speaks to groups and um, sects that have like em emotional um, bonds. And then when you put Saturn into that place, especially because Jupiter also has a tendency to be sort of religious and, you know, sort of ideological, and you put in the kind of clan dimension of um, water, we, we, we group together somehow. Um, that's where you can get Saturn as the Lord of Oppositions, uh, in this sign can bring up some very deep um, rooted uh, polarizations between uh, lo like loyalty groups or factions. Um, so, and it also bring, tends to bring up the plight of the oppressed or um, the, the people who are, are hated by one group or another and, and like persecuted or, or people will, who will try to eliminate them altogether. Um <clears throat> And I'll give examples of all of these things. Number three is the pride of the outcast or the reversing of the fate of those who are marginalized. It is as though <clears throat> I was saying earlier where the it can be moments of great transition or make or break moments for outsiders or, or to use the angst that you feel or the hurt that you feel to motivate some kind of change or breakthrough. These are Saturn and Pisces kinds of dynamics. It's like a very emotionally driven placement for Saturn. Um, well, another thing that can happen is those who are outcast or marginalized can experience, like I said earlier, breakthroughs or the reversing of fate or fortune in some dramatic way. Um, and I would say, again, that probably has to do, uh, at least in part, with the fact that um, Saturn and Pisces will bring up, you know, uh, Again, like the plight of the oppressed, the 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 archetypal division between sinners and saints, um, or the the victims and saviors, victims and redeemers, and um, it will often uh, bring up a sense of I once was lost, but now I'm found, and that's all of that in some ways is part of the sort of romantic melancholic uh, combination of Saturn and Pisces. I was lost, but now I'm found. Uh, I was I was. Uh, I was picked on, but now I've I've found some shelter or some safety or some help, that kind of thing. Um, and but usually it comes because there is some hurt or wound or oppression happening. So it's like they come together, the oppression and the liberation um, <clears throat> come together. Now it, people don't usually associate Saturn with liberation, but you have to understand that Saturn was a planet that was not so much about limitations as it was about boundaries. 
And boundaries always include things that are on either side of the whatever the boundary is. So, for example, um, you know, if there's if you build a wall around a city, there's the wilderness outside of the city and there's the, you know, metropolis within the wall does um, in some ways amplifies the tension and the differences uh, between the nature outside the city wall and the city life within. Uh, but it does not, in that sense, it, it's not best to think about Saturn as the wall as like um, a limiting thing that's oppressing nature. It could be, right? But it can also, interestingly, it can amplify the alluring and romantic qualities of nature specifically because it divides them away from city life. And so the call to go beyond is has always been a part of what Saturn represents. That's why it was the dimmest, most distant planet sitting at the edge of the visible uh, cosmos. And beyond Saturn, it was always implied was uh, higher dimensions, which is why, and you've heard me say this before, but which is why people like Dante gave the seventh sphere of heaven, <clears throat> the highest realm, to contemplatives and, and mystics who spent time uh, close to God, but in some ways distant or far from city life. See what I mean? So when you're looking at people who are are marginalized, you're talking with Saturn and Pisces, you're talking about uh, the boundaries that get created between, you know, who's in and who's out. And when, when those divisions are amplified, so too can the feeling of redemption from marginalization or redemption from hurt or pain or suffering through something romantic and redeeming. This is why Pisces has always had within it both the victim and the redeemer. Um, and Saturn amplifies those te those tensions, uh, which is why it can be so interesting to see how during this time there will, there will be ways in which uh, certain uh, people will be even more persecuted or harmed, but then you'll also have these remarkable breakthrough moments for exactly those same maybe types of groups or people. And number four is um, the spirit of exploration and the opening of new spaces and also almost like opening up for an exchange across boundaries. Now, this is because, again, we're moving from uh, winter to spring. So this is a transitional space. And it's one that's opening from darkness into light as it hands over to Aries. And also, um, you're talking again, Saturn in this very watery feminine sign as it can amplify the divisions between private and public or uh, all sorts of other divisions. But then it also, because it's so watery, it tends to, um, it tends to be about making um, room for like some kind of fluid exchange across hard boundaries the softening or or uh, tensing and relaxing of boundaries, the softening of boundaries for sure, but also like opening and closing of, of boundaries. Um, and so you'll find that one of the themes of Saturn and Pisces is there'll be these hard divisions or boundaries, and then there'll be this sense of going beyond them into exploratory spaces or um, sort of fluid exchanges across boundaries. And that's all contained in that sort of interesting duality that Saturn presents about oppositional tension. Uh, remember, Saturn was the lord of opposites. So uh, those are the four themes. Now, let me show you what was happening during the 1994 to that spring of 96 era. And I picked lots of random things. So I'm not, this list is not meant to be exhaustive and I'm certainly open to having, I probably missed some big things. You know, I, I just picked some things that I thought um, nicely represented these themes. Uh, number one is Nine Inch Nails releases Downward Spiral. I'm not sure if you guys know of that album, but let me just, I want to read to you a quote about that album that I think you'll find interesting. It is a concept album detailing the self-destruction of a man from the beginnings of his mythanthropic downward spiral to his suicidal breaking point. So um, yeah, you have uh, you have um, this very angsty, uh, dark story about someone spiraling downward and completely losing themselves. This is exactly the the deeply angsty, melancholic um, 
spirit of Saturn and Pisces, a, a great album that came out. There was an iconic album that um, represents uh, many of the major themes of that uh, of that transit. Um, number two is Schindler's List in the early part of 94 won seven Oscars. And what is that movie about? It's obviously about the um, genocide and, and um, killing of Jewish people in the concentration camps of Nazi Germany. Uh, that movie wins a whole bunch of awards for illuminating the, that, that era and those uh, uh, um, terrible events in ways that were maybe more humanizing than anything that had ever been captured on film. So there's this deep uh, ability to empathize with the plight of, of marginalized um, people and terrible events and being able to like um, see them and have a deeper understanding of them. But like the Nine Inch Nails downward spiral about that sort of angsty, melancholic, um, uh, suicidal drive, uh, Number three is in the spring of 94, uh, Kurt Cobain committed suicide, a huge event in the history of, you know, rock and roll. Um, and in around the same time, not long after that happened, the Rwandan genocide began. So, I mean, these are like, I'm starting off with like stuff that's like pretty heavy, right? But this is Saturn in Pisces. There is a deeply melancholic sense of like, I don't belong in this world, screw this world, I want to release myself from the body, um, maybe through this, like, again, like a dark downward spiral kind of motif. Um, and you see the same kinds of themes um, being looked at in Schindler's List in um, the uh, killing of Jewish people in the concentration camps and otherwise. You see it in the suicide of Kurt Cobain, you see it in the Rwandan genocide. It's real. It's like it's going into the super dark spaces of um, of humanity, and um, the the idea here is that again, like from our list of of themes that we looked at, is that the the tendency for people to be oppressed, for there to be darkness and angst that's you know deeply amplified um, during this time, and also it's, it's they're, they're very emotional themes like very watery, Saturn in a water sign. Um, okay, but you also have these very interesting turning points that um, represent breakthroughs for uh, groups of people that are also often oppressed or marginalized. For example, around in, it was in 1994, I believe, Nelson Mandela was inaugurated as the first black president of South Africa. Huge breakthrough. Um, you know, uh, especially, you know, considering the themes of, you know, imprisonment that were part of uh, Nelson Mandela's life. Um, so let's see, it was spent over 27 years in prison. And so you, you can go from imprisoned to president. You see how that that's that critical transition point from someone who had been oppressed to someone who has a breakthrough, but it doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes it's someone who's like depressed and takes their own life. Uh, sometimes it, there's there, and there's really, really dark themes like genocide or suicide, or the, the kind of themes of downward spiraling and total destruction of the moral, you know, universe. But then you also have these themes of um, redemption. So you have, you can think about it as damnation and salvation as well as, uh, you know, victims and redeemers. Um, so damnation and salvation, these are very like, uh, almost like operatic quality uh, of, of energy in Pisces. And that's the, the sort of Jupiter Venus dynamic um, coming together in this water sign. So anyway, another one was that the Church of England starts ordaining female priests. Okay. So there's another marginalized group of people, at least within the history of the church, the women, uh, women in leadership. And here's a moment of tremendous uh, redemption for that group. Um, so an oppressed group that has a breakthrough, while other groups are being oppressed. You have the theme of salvation, being released from some from imprisonment karmically and becoming a president, but you also have suicide. Do you see what I'm saying? So 
get these themes. They're very intense and, and, and at times very often super polarizing. Well, Pope John Paul II wrote a letter stating that only men can or should be ordained in response to this. Um, so, you know, you'll, you'll also have the like pushing back uh, and the tendency to want to double down on um, uh, things that are um, uh, like, like an energy of persecution, which is also why you have the Rwandan genocide in a sense. There are, now, don't get me wrong, going through these, there are other transits in the sky that contribute greatly. It's never just one. But we're just trying to understand some of these events from the standpoint of an era when Saturn was in Pisces. Number eight, Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman were murdered and OJ Simpson flees from the police. And then, of course, not long after that, uh, he's being um, tried for their murders and ends up uh, being found not guilty and then uh, and then losing in a civil suit, if I remember correctly. But one of the reasons that this is um, really interesting is that this trial was very, very public. It was kind of unique in American history in terms of like how public and how much attention it was getting. Um, and also it was a trial that was, um, and if you ever watched, there was, there was a documentary that I, I want to say it was OJ made in America. I think that's what it was called, but it was amazing how much the trial was the, the storylines of the trial were cast along racial lines. This came not long after uh, the uh, brutal beating of Rodney King. Um, and so there's in it. So it's, it's a really, it's really, really interesting because in some ways the way, and this is in the documentary that I watched in some ways, his attorneys framed him as, you know, a, a victim of stere like stereotyping and prejudice that, you know, and so forth. And there was a lot of, like a lot of sympathy for, for that point of view at that moment, you know? Uh, but you have, you know, um, you end up having someone who, you know, I think a lot of people, if you, if you watch the whole uh, story and learned a lot about the whole situation, a lot of people feel like he got off on that one. You know, I'm not saying he did or didn't. I'm just saying it's interesting again, to see the, the topic of, victims and oppressors and redemption and imprisonment and coming free uh, after being persecuted. And um, yeah, it's like, it's some of it's like, it's, it's just really, really interesting how there's, um, there's a playing on, on the, the archetype. It's like the archetypal moment can't help but seize and play on the divisions between oppressed groups of, of people. And in some ways, one of the things that happens is we can very easily forget the reality of in the, what, who or what the individual is a part of whatever group or collective storyline we cast them as a part of. Um, so that's interesting too. Uh, anyway, number nine is the Lion King was released by Disney. And the reason this is important is that in the history of Disney films, although I think it was Aladdin came one year before it, but Disney was, re Disney's, um, creation of the Lion King has largely been recognized as one of the most pivotal moments in terms of like kids movies starting to be oriented toward uh, different kinds of people from different parts of the world. The Lion King in many ways was recognized as a celebration of Africa and of the African spirit, so to speak. Um, and so even though it's all animals, there's this celebration of Africa and it coincides with Disney starting to go in the direction of exploring different uh, racial groups and, and different types of characters. Uh, not all of which they probably succeeded at very, you know, very well. Um, but I'm not saying they did or didn't, but like Pocahontas comes afterwards, Mulan comes afterwards. And then Disney starts on a path of trying to pay more attention to uh, marginalized or not as, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Like not as well represented groups of people in their stories and fairy tales and legends and so forth that they present in kids movies. But this, this was a, such a Saturn in Pisces moment, you know, such a, such a transitional moment for uh, the way that we pay attention to groups of people and the way that groups of people are, are, are treated. Um, and the, a lot of the times what's interesting is there's this feeling of a sort of celebratory redemptive feeling. It's not, there's the same feeling in the air with Nelson Mandela inaugurated as the first uh, black president of South Africa, 
it's very is a very celebratory feeling around it. Okay, well, switching into a certain a different direction, um, Jeff Bezos founds Amazon. <laughs> we all know how that went. Uh, so, so what I find super interesting about this is that <clears throat> you have you have this weird way in which a series of events start happening that represent a the opening of boundaries for the sake of fluid exchange. It's like fluid exchange across boundaries that before were like too hard or rigid to be crossed. Something about Saturn in Pisces seems to suggest that boundaries are becoming more fluid, uh, which makes sense for Saturn moving into a water sign in the sign of the benefics that somehow hard edges are softening. So Jeff Bezos founds Amazon and we start, it's not, it doesn't happen all at once, but it's a transitional moment for what would come to be the, the future of uh, the marketplace and exchange. Um, now you also have uh, like, I'll just jump around a little bit. Now um, you have the major league baseball players going on strike and the world series was canceled. Um, this had to do with um, breakdowns in negotiations and feeling like there was a form of um, mistreatment and oppression happening to the players from the league and the, the ownership. So um, that's a great example of the, one of the themes that I mentioned, which is something like civil war, where you have groups that should be together, the watery togetherness of Jupiter, something coherent that grants unity in a water sign. But now you have division within some kind of watery collective. Um, for example, around that time, the Taliban was founded. Um, you have the idea here, obviously here you have a, what would become an ex, like an extremist terrorist group uh, that is being founded at this time. And it represents uh, a kind of schism or, or um, fracturing off from uh, other groups uh, within the Islamic faith world. So you can look at it from that perspective, um, but it's also about starting to say, you know, we're going to come together as a way of dealing with what or who we oppose and, and what to us represents derivation from the truth or, you know, um, so anyway, and it's, I'm not, I'm not a historian of the Taliban or that, that, that historical, um, that group, you know, but so I'm just kind of trying to scratch the surface of this a little bit, but that's an interesting one because it becomes a group of persecution, um, and, uh, of, of, um, hatred toward people that, that are not, that they do not agree with. Uh, now, number 13 is the PlayStation is released. So um, this is interesting because you have, now you have a um, an advancement in technology, but the release of the PlayStation also starts opening up the global uh, marketplace for it, it greatly opens up the, gr the global marketplace for video games and for communities of gamers um, because well it's you know basically like PlayStation becomes the vehicle by means of which the whole gaming world becomes much more international it's like considered a breakthrough in terms of like the internationalization of gameplay in, in video games, which is really cool. And there's other things too, but this is, you know, recognized as like a moment where a console comes out that starts um, gaining, uh, it starts opening boundaries between places in the world. I mean, PlayStation is one of the reasons now why in both computer games and console based games, people play with each other from literally every country in the world. So, and PlayStation had a huge role to play and it was released during this time, I find that interesting. Netscape Navigator is released, which would become the major um, like browser for the internet for a long period of time. And again, now you have something that's creating that, the ability to move fluidly around the World Wide Web. Uh, so that's interesting. And at the same time, America Online offers a gateway to the World Wide Web for the first time for everyone. So it's suddenly what was a concept that the web is out there, but how does it become more accessible and how does fluid exchange all around this world wide web become accessible? Those are Saturn and Pisces themes. You have these kind of opening of gateways and boundaries. Fascinating. Now the cosmonaut Valery Pol Pol Polyakov, I'm not sure how you say his name. He spent four, I'm thinking it's a he, 
Anyway, spends 438 days in outer space. And I like this because it goes along with that theme of like opening up boundaries and going beyond uh, previous limitations. Very Saturn and Pisces. As much as Saturn and Pisces can be this sort of uh, angsty and sometimes like divisive and, and sort of um, can bring out the worst of like group group warfare uh, and doubling down on this is us and you're not a part of it. It can amplify themes of insiders and outsiders and stuff like that very painfully. But there can also be these, these moments of like breaking through to some greater space that going beyond previous limitations, which is a very Piscean um, way of, uh, you know, it's like Saturn and Pisces can't help but, you know, open some, there's some holes in the fence, you know? <laughs> anyway, uh, around the same time, Selena was murdered by her fan club president. Um, and Anyway, that's a, a, another example of like these bright shining stars like Kurt Cobain, similarly, who like died tragically. Um, and yeah, I don't want, there's not a lot more to say about that other than that you can just see this theme of like someone who's young and promising meeting with some kind of tragic end. It's very like Romeo and Juliet, sort of Shakespearean. Um, but you also, again, like you do have the like... Um, the idea of like factions or groups and then splits within them. Uh, anyway, you see the Oklahoma city bombing. Not a lot to say about that. It's another, uh, super like ideologically driven, you know, like, like hate crime and act of terrorism. Um, number 19, the internet becomes wholly privatized. Uh, so rather than trying to make it like this, this, uh, sort of, wholly public domain, it becomes wholly privatized. That's interesting. Um, but one of the things it, it does is it, it leads, you know, well, I'm not, I don't, there's so much could be said about the history of the internet, but, um, I'll just leave it to that and let you guys think about that one. Number 20, um, Lisa Clayton completes her 10 month solo circumnavigation from the Northern hemisphere. So she sailed around the globe, um, by herself. And I think she capsized twice as well. But breaking a limit or barrier on the literal ocean, doesn't that sound like Saturn and Pisces, especially like a vessel moving across the great the great uh, expanse of the ocean? Very Saturn and Pisces. eBay is founded. You know, eBay is, again, one of the spaces that suddenly allows for consumers to be have their own market, to, to have a space where they can uh, trade and sell and buy um, without, you know, uh, having to go to the, the, the store. You can sell your clothes. You can buy someone else's clothes. And that's always existed like, you know, like in garage sales or whatever. It's pretty unique that eBay is coming out and doing that. And so you have this space of exchange that's being opened up where previously there were, um, there was maybe some kind of inaccessibility. Uh, interesting how different structures, Saturn, of exchange, fluid exchange, Pisces come about. Uh, you have the Million Man March uh, happening in D.C. for the first time. Uh, let me just give you a brief, in case you don't know what that is. So, the Million Man March was a large gathering of African-American men in Washington, D.C. Uh, in 1995. Uh, it, uh, it was held on around the National Mall, if you live in D.C., you know where that is. The National African American Leadership Summit, a leading group of civil rights activists and the Nation of Islam working with scores of civil rights organizations, including many local chapters of the NAACP, formed the Million Man March Organizing Committee. Um, and there was uh, all sorts of things that happened. It was kind of this grassroots, um, it, part of a, uh, no, it says here, the march took place in the context of a larger grassroots movement that set out to win politicians' attention for urban and minority issues through widespread voter registration camps. Anyway, so uh, just another like super interesting and important development for a group of people, especially when it comes to like voting rights and stuff like that. Um, and at least this is an, this is an important moment where um, there's a kind of transition happening and there's kind of a theme of redemption in the air or moving beyond a previous limit. Um, now, the uh, FDA approves saquinavir to treat HIV and AIDS, and the amount of deaths from HIV AIDS, uh, as soon as it did, went down from like 
50 or 60,000 a year to like 17 or 18. So this is really Im important development for another group of, you could, I would, I think you can rightly describe as a hurting and persecuted community. So uh, that's a huge, huge development in, in medicine. Um, now, uh, number 24 is NASA's Galileo probe enters Jupiter's atmosphere. <laughs> it's like literally moving into the space of Jupiter. <laughs> that was fascinating. And it's like, it's so interesting that we're sending this kind of, the structure, this device uh, into a space that previously we couldn't get to. And it happens to be Jupiter as well, which remember Pisces is the sign of Jupiter. Um, and then the last one is NATO uh, it finally intervenes in the Bosnian war, which is thought to uh, set a sequence of events uh, in action that would end up uh, helping the Bosnian war uh, come to an end. And that was a civil war as well, as far as I understand it. I'm, again, I'm not a historian, but, um, but yeah. So again, the themes to watch for, outsiders and angst, genocide, civil war, uh, the plight of the oppressed, the pride of the outcast, a reversing of the fate of those who are marginalized, kind of standing up, rising up, feeling strong, turning the tide, flipping the script somehow, the spirit of exploration, the opening of new spaces uh, for exchange, for fluid exchange. Um, now, again, please excuse me. I am not a historian, and I uh, my background is in creative writing, you know, and mostly I use astrology as a form of personal divination for people. And I tend to focus the way that I do my videos on how you might experience these things personally. But I do think it's interesting to reflect on what was going on historically when, you know, Pluto was in Aquarius or Saturn is uh, was in Pisces. I'd like to take Saturn and Pisces back to a few previous uh, time periods as well. That might be interesting. Um, and maybe, you know, um, show you guys some other things that I found. I did, I have done a little bit of that, but it's... Um, it's also getting into spaces where, you know, the history that's more recent, it's like, I remember a lot of those things. So it's easier for me to talk about some of them. But anyway, let me know if you guys would find that interesting. Should we take Saturn and Pisces back another 30 years? Uh, let's see, when was it? Let's go, just out of curiosity, uh, let's go back to, I think it was the 60s, if I remember correctly. We're going to go, uh, yeah, so, whoops. So it would have been... Looks like 1964. Oh, this, yeah, I bet you it was real. There's some probably some really good stuff around there. Yeah, so 64, 65, all the way into 66. Um, so, yeah, I think we should. Wouldn't that be fun? You guys let me know what you think, but I think that might be fun to do. And I have looked at some of the events during that period um, a few months ago when I started doing this research. I kind of looked back at that period first, and then I just decided to jump to the 90s. But if you guys like this, if it would be entertaining for you to hear some more about that other previous period, um, I would be glad to do that. And in the meantime, um, we will be doing kind of a, a probably, I think probably two more videos on Saturn into Pisces this week anyway, uh, just because it's such a big transition. Make sure you check out the horoscopes for, um, for March if you want to get a read on where this is landing in your birth chart. Uh, you can see those at the top of the video, uh, at the top of the YouTube feed on my channel. All right, that's what I've got for today. I hope you guys are having a good one, and we will see you again tomorrow. Bye, everyone.